Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to the Ehlers Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders. Today's talk is an introduction to the Ehlers Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders, which you will often hear abbreviated as EDS and HSD. So, very briefly, what are the Ehlers Danlos syndromes? These are a group of hereditary disorders and they all involve the connective tissue. There are 14 different types. And these have a wide range of differing presentations. The underlying genes causing 13 of these types are known, but unfortunately, the genes underlying the hypermobile type, which is the most common type, are not yet known. The genes that we know about affect the structural proteins of the connective tissue and the enzymes involved in the processing of these proteins. So the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes have certain things in common. They all involve the connective tissue, and joint laxity is a common feature in all of them. The skin is involved in most types, with skin fragility, skin hyperextensibility, stretch marks, and easy bruising predominant features. And many other organ systems are involved to varying degrees in the different types of EDS. When we think about connective tissue, we're talking about the extracellular material, so the material that's outside the cells of the body that holds joints and many organs together. Connective tissue is found in every organ in the body, and some examples of connective tissue are tendons, ligaments, and the dura that surrounds the brain and spinal cord and the cerebrospinal fluid. Collagen is a predominant protein of connective tissue. And there are 27 different types of collagen. The classical type of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is caused by variants in the genes encoding type 5 collagen, while the vascular type of EDS is caused by variants in the gene encoding type 3 collagen. There are other extracellular molecules that are called proteoglycans, and these are made up of a protein backbone, and then there are sugars that are added to that protein backbone to make the proteoglycans complete. And all in all, we know of 20 different genes that encode the proteins and the enzymes that process them that cause the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes. We diagnose EDS according to the 2017 diagnostic criteria, and those criteria are found at the Ehlers-Danlos Society website if you'd like further information about them. Now, we know that certain people who are hypermobile will not meet the diagnostic criteria for EDS, and it was because of this that the idea of the hypermobility spectrum disorders was put forward in 2017. Joint hypermobility might be localized or found in only a single joint or just a couple of joints. That's what we call localized joint hypermobility. It can be generalized, which means that it's found in pretty much all the joints in the body. Or it may be peripheral, meaning it's just found in the small joints of the fingers and toes. Now, these varying types of joint hypermobility may be asymptomatic, meaning that they're not causing any problems at all. They're just loose joints and people go about their business without having any medical issues related to them. But if hypermobility is symptomatic, including chronic pain related to the joint hypermobility, but the hypermobility doesn't meet the diagnostic criteria for a syndrome, we call this a hypermobility spectrum disorder. If the person with hypermobility meets the diagnostic criteria for a specific syndrome like EDS, then we can make the diagnosis of that syndrome. So that's a brief overview of the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders. You may refer to my previous video on diagnosing hypermobility for a discussion of how to tell whether a person has generalized joint hypermobility. Thanks for joining me.